Yo, what is good YouTube? I'm Richie Kim, and today I'm gonna to be bringing you all the performance review on the brand new Nike KD13. Before we get started, if you all enjoy sneaker content just like this, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button down below. But anyways, let's get right into it. As always, starting off with the traction, the KD13 features a circular traction pattern. It has like these craters in it. it kind of reminds me of the PG3 traction. And let me tell you that the traction on the KD13 is really nice. Whether you're playing on an indoor court or an outdoor court, you guys are gonna have no problems. This thing sticks like glue, you're gonna stop on a dime. As far as dust pickup goes, I'd say it's very, very minimal. And when it does pick up some dust, you know, just do that quick light wipe and you guys are gonna be good to go. In the areas where you don't have like the circles just like scattered throughout the shoe, you have like these weird like, I guess ellipses. And also in the forefoot where the zoom pod is, you do have like a couple lines. And I didn't really notice any difference in the traction in like those different areas. Traction all around was just really, really nice. If you all need reliable traction, whether you're making those hard crosses or you know, just those really hard stops, the KD13 has you covered. Traction on the KD13 was really, really good. Moving on to the cushion, the KD13 has a Phylon midsole or some sort of EVA midsole, but within that you do have that full length zoom strobel with a double stack zoom unit in the forefoot, which is an upgrade from the KD12 in my opinion, because the KD12 had a double stack zoom unit in the heel. The forefoot addition is a really, really nice touch. I'm really glad Nike decided to do that because I believe most players like myself, we play more on our forefoot. So having that in the forefoot is awesome. It does feel great. I would say the difference isn't too drastic from the way the KD12 feels, but you can definitely feel a little bit of that extra bounce in the forefoot. And like I said, it's a great addition. This cushion setup is gonna give you great responsiveness, great core feel, while also having really good impact protection. So if you all like having you know, that zoom air feel, this is definitely the shoe to go to because this is probably my favorite cushion setup as of right now. If you all like the KD12 cushion, this is definitely an upgrade. The cushion in the KD13 is awesome. Moving on to the materials, the KD13 features what I believe is some sort of textile. And you know, honestly, it's not the best feeling textile. I definitely think it's a downgrade from the KD12 in terms of materials, but it does do the job. You know, it does offer a lot of containment and I think durability should be just fine. The only thing is it does get a little bit hot in the shoe because there really are no ventilation holes. And you know, to the touch, it just doesn't feel that great as well. Moving on to other parts of the shoe, like around the heel, you do have like this open aired mesh around the back of the ankle collar. And also where the, I guess like the wings of the KD13 are and partially where the laces go through, you do have this synthetic piece I'm not sure what it is. It feels like a synthetic patent leather almost, but it's not really. It's very, very synthetic feeling. And I, you know, that kind of offers some extra support and added durability as well, but definitely doesn't feel the greatest in hand. One cool touch about the KD13 though, I'm not sure if it's just on this colorway or if it's on every single colorway, is that they do have like an exposed area at the top of the tongue that really gives it that deconstructed look that's you know very in right now. So overall, in terms of materials, I would say the quality isn't as good as the KD12, but the materials do do the job just fine. It's just nothing impressive. So moving on to the fit, I would say that the fit is the exact same as the KD12, which is a, you know, it, it runs narrow. So wide footers, you know, try it on in stores if you can. Otherwise you may want to go up a half size, maybe a full size, depending on how wide your foot is. But, if you do go up that full size, be very wary because it's gonna be really long. You know, KDs usually run just a little bit long and narrow, I guess because that's how Katie's foot is shaped. I don't know if you all have seen a picture of Katie's foot or not, but it it's very um, interesting to say the least. But yeah, wide footers, be careful. Everyone else, you should be fine just going true to size. I didn't really have any dead space up in the toe box area, which is really nice. I'd say that this is a pretty good one-to-one -one fit. I wouldn't say it's exactly one-to-one, -one, but it does come pretty close. The materials do lay nicely on my feet. I'd say it's an overall great fitting shoe. Fits very, very identical to the KD12. So whatever you guys want in that shoe, get the same in this, you guys should be fine. Moving on to the support in the KD13, the support was amazing. I didn't have any issues with the support in the shoe. I didn't have any heel slippage. I didn't have any side to side movement on the footbed. And also they do have like this plastic piece in the middle right here for that torsional rigidity and stability. I've never really had any issues with support in the KD12 or the KD13. And you know, definitely in the KD13, I feel like it's 
probably a little bit more supportive, which kind of makes sense because, you know, KD did injure himself in the KD-12, so they probably beefed up the KD-13 just for him. There's definitely a lot of cushion in the back heel area where your Achilles is, which completely makes sense to me. Support in the KD-13 was really good. The KD-13 retails for $150, which is the exact same price as the KD-12, and for $150, I definitely think it's worth it. This is a great performer, feels great on court, Honestly, aesthetically, I think it looks pretty cool too. Even the GR colorways are pretty nice, especially the multicolored one. I think it's like the, I wanna say it's like a Brooklyn Nets colorway where it's white and it has a multicolored outsole. I think that's pretty dope. But also the fact that you can customize a lot of this stuff on Nike ID or um, Nike by you, I believe that's what it's called now. Uh, there are some really, really cool ways you can customize the shoe and really make it your own. But $150, you're getting you know great cushioning, great traction, and you know the materials are okay, but everything else is super solid. So $150, definitely worth it. If you all wanted to pick up a pair of these, I would definitely recommend you do so. I don't think you'll be disappointed. That's pretty much it for this performance review. If you all like this video, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button down below. Also smash that like button because it really does help me out you know, with algorithms and whatnot. So please do that. While you guys are at it, check out this video on my left and on my right, and that's pretty much it. Until next time, peace.